what's more profound for New Yorkers is that your father's magazine, the, the magazine that he founded, that has been a staple of, of the left and was a progressive institution for, for so long, could be complicit in something like this. It's a betrayal. Uh, it's a really egregious betrayal, and I know that all the fans of The Voice uh, are just not aware that this is going on. And the ways in which they've defended their actions, I think, are particularly incorrigible considering what the Village Voice is supposed to be. Right. People's paper. It's just so unacceptable. I, I would be here if it was any paper doing this, but particularly because it's the Village Voice, and we live in a time when we need our independent name brands to maintain their credibility, their authority. Essential. What do you think, as, as far as accountability is concerned? I mean, shutting down back page is obviously the first step, but like, it's a broader issue and it has broader implications. In that. So, what happens afterwards? Well, after they shut down back page, it's an adult section, which is all we're asking them to do. Uh, the traffic will disperse and it will move to other places, and the coalition will follow these places. Uh, it's, it's not a battle that's going to end. It's just that we have the ability to, to strike an amazing blow to it that will cut down severely the amount of kids who are getting sold into this. So that's, that's what we'll take. And, and Lacey and Larkin, who are, you know, executive editor and the, the chief executive who are making, you know, $22 million a year off called ads, I mean, how can they call themselves journalists or purveyors of journalism? You know, where, where do you draw the line? How do you decide? How do you decide what is going to benefit the magazine, and how do you enable? How do you enable something like this? Where, what decision process goes into that? You know. I mean, listen. I can I can understand the tough spot that the editors are in right. because their bosses are telling them this is why you have a job, this is why you have a voice, right. and they. It's easy to distance oneself. You can always find reasons and excuses why you're not responsible for it. But at the end of the day, if you phrase it like this. You know that even one child is getting abused for your profit. Isn't that enough? I, I would say, hard as it would be, if I was an editor in that position, I would have to question whether or not I could look myself in the mirror and go to work Do we know how the staff of Village Voices responded to this issue at all? Have they been remain quiet? Or I, I have had no interaction with them. Uh, yeah, I would be more than happy to go in and talk to them and explain where I'm coming from and, and hear their side of it. But I would imagine that the staff uh, is not in support of this, but doesn't have the power they feel to do something about it. Aside from putting that in this day and age, it's a lot to ask somebody to put Silence out. from the choice oh, and the lack of defense that they've made of it. What do you make of that? I don't think there is a defense for it, and I think that now it's getting to the point where enough news is covering it and enough people have signed the petition that it's becoming undeniable. And I think their goal before was to lap it off, to make it seem like it was a bunch of uptight, you know, priests and clergymen trying to clamp down on, on sex. And it's just not that case.